Okay, so one minute. Okay, so so the point that we had the the so recapping what is there on the twenty first. So the time this may be a little too big. We'll find out. Okay, so the one of the topics was time to expiration and Vega. Okay, so longer dated options have higher Vega. So if you if you get your eyeball view correct, the benefit, the secondary benefit, incidental benefit. Let's call it an incidental benefit. An incidental benefit is the fact that you get a uh, extra bang for your buck because the longer dated option will have higher Vega than if you had bought a shorter dated option. Okay, so now the other point. So at this point is clear. Now the other point that uh, we had discussed on the 21st where we don't have the uh, is position sizing. Actually, we can copy this. Uh, yeah, we have discussed it. I'm just writing it uh, since she's saying that there is no note for that, which is true. And then we don't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll just briefly cover it. I'm not going to cover it in detail. Where did where did we go there? Uh, we so ultimately that video was discussed with the partners when previous year was video with the official that. Yeah, but then I'll have to find it. It's I, it'll take very few minutes. It will take like five to seven minutes to cap it. Right? I'll just give you a brief outline because the basic principles we have already covered. Okay, the basic principles we have already covered. So uh, you are just going to apply the basic principles. I'm just going to give you uh, this one. Okay, so this is the topic that is not there because the audio is not there on that. So position sizing on options. One sec. So let's. Okay, position sizing on options. This is the topic. Are you following what we are doing? We are just trying. This is what we discussed. Okay. So basically, there are two broad approaches to this position sizing. Okay. One. Some font size has become very big. Okay, so uh, the first point is the first way is that we uh, what we do is assume uh, option held to maturity because we are talking about so position sizing is based on risk okay position sizing is based on risk asset i mean it's uh, it's based on as you can see even this is what we did in our on uh, in our spot trading also remember when we talked about what is the when we had to deal with that decision problem in our nsc trading project when we had to deal with the decision problem of how do i decide how many shares to buy or how many shares to sell okay so that we arrived at the that, that is not an exogenous uh, variable that is an endogenous variable that is decided based on the entry price the exit price and the total risk that you can afford to take on each trade remember we have all those calculations in our notes okay the formula in our notes okay what we have uh, you know how to arrive at those uh, uh, calculations so it's it's uh, so that's the, uh, the uh, so that same principle that we are going to use there so in any situation where we have uh, okay this we can close now okay i think recording should be on yeah it's on okay let me open your um, okay we'll have we have too many tabs on that one so let's open your calc file and we'll have so we have uh, different uh, models for calculating that okay so for for calculating the position size so the same principle we are going to use here also in a position sizing for options so the first uh, so there are two broad options uh, to prove two broad alternatives uh, we won't use the word options here so uh, the first alternative is to assume that the entire the option is going to be held to maturity and it's going to expire worthless okay so uh, why did i say it's based on risk because when we calculated our position size even for spot trading what was driving our calculations because remember in one of the exogenous variables was the total dollar amount that we can afford to lose remember here if you looked at uh, some of your trade risk calculations okay the position size was coming out of uh, the position size was being driven by the average risk per trade okay this is the system edge this is the average loss okay which is the average risk for trade so when you are trying to figure out how much to buy the answer to that is based on this is the maximum amount that you can lose per trade 
and then you take the entry price and the exit price and then you based on that you figure out uh, how many units you can afford to buy or sell okay so therefore it shows you that position size is not something which is exogenously determined which unfortunately even many professionals on trading desks just randomly decide how to how much to buy okay it should actually come from a risk calculation okay so the same principle is going to be applied we are going to look at let's say for our option trading program also we have a, a maximum risk per trade of 41.6 dollars okay say 42k we have 42k maximum risk allowable per trade in this case when we buy options the only you're talking about position sizing for options we are going to basically assume option held to maturity and we are going to assume that it expires worthless okay so in this case we will buy okay a max amount to spend on premium equal to max loss per trade okay so the max loss per trade comes from remember you saw that our calculation earlier not here and you know how this number is derived you remember that that you have you basically make some assumptions about your trading system what's going to happen some ex ante calculations any given period quarter month year five years whatever it is for that period you have to estimate number of trades you have to estimate total percentage losing trades okay that gives you a total number of losing trades okay and then you have to look at your risk capital what is your risk capital you have 5 million of risk capital okay so you should trade in a way so you make the worst case assumption because you want to come out with some deterministic answers okay remember deterministic versus probabilistic yes. when you do monte carlo simulation the output is a probabilistic output it's not a deterministic output but probabilistic output is very risky because it's like there's a 5% chance of me dying so i take the bungee jump but then maybe i fall in that 5% so there's all, so we want to be in a situation where you know we want to be in the situation where there is it nothing worse can happen we are already covering the worst case so we want to go for deterministic kind of solutions so we assume that if these assumptions are correct number of trades percentage losers okay so therefore we take uh, this uh, total number of losers 135 plus 1 so we divide the total risk capital by 135 plus 1 because why the plus 1 because uh, we assume all the losses are stacked together in the beginning okay and then you should have money left over for one more trade because if you are already bankrupt and zero then you can't take any more trades so you must have money left over but if you, according to your calculations there should be no no more losses so now it's all profits okay so that's why this is how you arrive at this number okay and this guides your position sizing eventually okay it guides your position sizing so therefore here what we are doing is we are connecting that maximum position size on options one minute i'll just I'll just finish this point so is this first clear position sizing on option the question that tani asked the other day that what should be the total number of or another way of asking is that uh, what is the total amount i should spend on each option okay so this is basically the position i mean or position sizing uh, relate also related to amount to spend on premium okay how much to spend on premium the amount should be based on maximum loss per trade so it should be equal to the maximum loss per trade is this clear okay all right so so uh, so this is the amount that you so here we are assuming what we are assuming here is when we equate it to the maximum loss per trade we are assuming that we are going to hold this option to maturity and it will expire worthless okay why do we think like that because when we are doing risk planning we always assume the worst case we don't think about the good times because the good times we don't need to plan for the good times your planning is only for the bad times right so we therefore we make this kind of assumption this is one assumption yeah yeah what is your question Anju? maybe use the mic do we have the mic Garvit. <laughs> Mike, Mike, on. Yeah. Yeah. So then, then we are already done. I mean, I'll just quickly wrap it up. Okay. This is yeah. So these basic principles were already taught. I'm just quickly recapping it. So just for your, just to refresh your ideas. Okay. And the second one is basically that which we don't want to do. Okay. Okay. We want to say follow. Okay, so is this clear? We say that we you follow one above and this no I'm just one minute. I'm just 
taking care of the fact that there are no notes there is no audio for that day okay but the basic principles have already been covered okay and the reason i said that follow one above don't follow number two is because number two is basically assume here again you will end up with some probabilistic kind of estimate assume that somewhere along the way you sell option is sold for some positive uh, price okay here you make sure so suppose you buy the option here we have some options here all right suppose i buy this option maybe at 286 i buy the put the 58 and a half put i buy at 286 after maybe three weeks or after this is only 11 days left after maybe four days i feel that i no longer have the view to buy the put i i have surrendered my view so i should get rid of my positions and i find that this put is trading in the market maybe the bid is maybe 150 so then i can sell it off at 150 so my loss is only 286 minus 150 okay excluding the commissions okay but the problem here with the second method you can always estimate you can assume that i lose 25 percent if i lose 25 percent of the value i'll cut it off okay I'll, I'll square the position but as i told you here that here you can't actually that 25 percent loss of your premium value has nothing to do with the market outlook remember that this your view your views on options buy to to buy call or sell port or whatever is based on a view on the underlying and a view on the eyeball chart okay so therefore your view to square off your position or to surrender your position or to you know cut the loss on your position should also be based on views on this are you following what i'm saying so it should be true that your either your underlying view or your eyeball view has changed now this need not correspond necessarily to some kind of arbitrarily decided percentage loss of your option value option price are you are you under, are you following what i'm saying that the fact that your option has lost 25 percent of the value need not have anything to do with the change in the outlook for the underlying or the change in the outlook for the implied ball so it's not logically consistent to approach the trading of options in that manner are you following what i'm saying right so that's another you can have an arbitrary cutoff i'm just writing it for the sake of writing it assume this was sold for some price so let's say plan to liquidate if option loses x percentage of value okay so i can say this x let the x be 40 percent so if my option price drops by 40 percent from the time i bought it if i have lost 40 percent on my uh, premium outlay then i will just randomly cut it off and i will just arbitrarily cut it off in the market square it in the market but the problem this is not logically consistent that's why i'm saying you follow one above okay is everyone clear but you should also be clear about what are the options available technically this is one of the other alternatives available but this is not logically very satisfying because it doesn't have anything to do with the uh, the change in the outlook based on the view on the underlying and the view on the eyeballs this is clear okay Garvid, what are you looking at okay to look up and everybody should be looking up and uh, engaging with whatever's going on in the class okay all right so this this takes care of your problem now anjum yes. does it take care of your problem okay we can move on to today's class which is we, we don't have much time but we'll do it whatever we can do okay so we are at positions versus synthetic and, uh, and so as i told you figure 1.2 you will find at figure 1.2 you will find the long underlying and short underlying uh, charts as well okay so we had done uh, we'll just quickly run through this okay uh, let's go through this and which which chapter is this which chapter is this which which 12.2 12.2 okay so we are in 12.1 okay so we have this is uh, yeah so the entire figure is over here so you can see so please make sure you practice with otherwise you will not be able to internalize all the stuff okay so you can see here what is happening here the dotted lines everyone can make out the dotted lines and the solid line yes. okay so the dotted lines are essentially the synthetic equivalent and the solid line is uh, is the actual position that you're creating okay so you can look at it the other way also it's basically two equal so these two dotted lines equal this okay 
so you can see this here this this is actually the final profile let's go with the what the sequence we have in the notes long underline we have done short underline we have already done short put okay short put if you want to have a short put situation okay this is your short put first of all short means there should be some part on the upper upper part some positive short is showing you some option in uh, premium inflow so you have a positive part on the top okay this is your premium inflow positive part on top means i mean uh, a section on top above the zero line means there is some profit at some situation this profit is the premium when there is no exercise so short this has to be some kind of short position now is it short call or short put we can see that but you are starting to lose money as the market falls below the strike price so this must be a short put okay so the short put can be recreated by essentially you can whenever you are thinking about this you have to uh, take it step by step take it on either side of the strike price take it step by step the first part is you got to create a situation where you keep losing money on the as the market drops okay so the one of the ways you do that is by taking the long stock position if you take the long stock position and the the whenever you're looking at underlying positions the rate at which the underlying position is executed or entered into is to, to be taken as equal to the strike price so the k is the strike price we are discussing positions we have six types of positions okay long underlying short underlying plus the four option positions now we are playing around we are taking each of those six positions and we are trying to create synthetic equivalence for those positions okay so uh, therefore now the question is when you are looking at options we know have strike prices and we are putting them at k now if we are talking about look, look, uh, looking at the underlying positions long and short then we have to assume that the price at which the underlying position is entered into the short position or the long position that is also at the strike price which is k okay you can see this here so this here is actually you, you see the so here they are actually taken it as uh, a little bit below k okay they have taken it as a little bit below k but we can work out the strike price based on the uh, price and uh, prices of the options of, of the call and puts but for the sake of simplicity you can assume it as the same as the strike price okay of the options okay we take k as the same as the strike price of the options okay so the basic idea is to get the profile the basic is so here you want to create a profile where you lose money when the market falls below the strike so you want to go along the underlying at the strike price okay so if you go long the underlying means as the market stop drops stops below, drops below the strike you lose money on the long underlying okay but on the long underlying on the sh because you're looking at a short put profile you should actually get some kind of this kind of a short put profile where there is a constant it should not be a continuously increasing profit on the other side because if you just leave it at the long underlying then what will happen is following this dotted line as the market rises above the strike price you will continuously make profits but that's not what you want you want to create a profit profile where above the strike price there is a flat uh, profile here flat constant profit flat constant profit should be there right are you following what we want to create so you should understand the logic that you, what you are trying to create is this dotted solid line you are trying to create the solid line which is the short put profile is this clear yes, sir. okay so now you are trying to create this the left hand side of it you have already created by going long the underlying okay so you have created this but now the problem is if you are long the underlying the when it goes above the strike you are constantly making money on the underlying as the market is going up now that's not what you want you don't want a linear increasing profile like this you want to cut it off here you want a, uh, a kink in this curve here you want to basically make sure that this part is constant here okay so the way you do that how can we do that are you following what the objective is short going short what if you go short the underlying then what will happen is your long underlying and short underlying will cancel out completely and then you will have no position you can't go short the underlying you can't go short you follow what i'm saying if you go short the underlying then the long underlying and the short underlying have completely cancelled you have no position left so you want to do something else to make sure that the above the strike price you don't have this continuously increasing profile so what do you is are you following what we are doing yes, sir. make sure you follow step by step okay what what we are trying to do this is clear okay what happens will be you are not engaged in the class you are looking down all the time are you following yes, so look at what is being taught on the board 
you are not are you not feeling well okay all right okay so um so you want to basically make sure that we don't get this profile because with the long stock position we are just getting a as the market rises above the strike price the profile is increasing the profit profile is increasing in a linear fashion we don't want that because we want to basically create the skink and create a constant profit it should not increase in a linear fashion along with the increase in the market price right so we have to find some way to eliminate this continuous upside which is happening this proportional gain that is happening in the long stock position we want to eliminate that somehow so that we can actually end up with a flat constant profit are you following what has to be done arora are you following the logic yeah what we are trying to we are trying to decompose how you construct synthetic equivalence right we are trying to construct the synthetic equivalent of a long put position short put position sorry okay so one part we said is okay we want to look, we want to go long the stock so that the left hand side of the profile will be taken care of if a long stock then market drops below the strike price then we will continuously lose money in a linear fashion that's fine what about the right hand side of the profile how what can we do short 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 what what is your objective your objective is to eliminate the profit that is happening above the as the market rises above the strike but one sec one sec let's be very clear about what we are trying to do we want to eliminate we want to eliminate the profit that is happening in the long stock position as the market rises above the strike we want to make sure that this linear increase in the profit profile because of the long stock position does not happen we want to eliminate that so but we can't surrender the long stock position we have to do something else so that it offsets yeah who said short call yeah so think about it if you sell a call at the strike at the same price where you are long what happens if you are long a stock at 100 and you sell a call at 100 then all the upside above 100 you are essentially giving up when if you sell a call let's say you are long stock at 100 okay that is basically creating this profile where you are going when you are long stock at 100 as the market price keeps on increasing your profit keeps on increasing okay but you don't want that you want to see when the market rises above the strike you want to just cut it all off at a constant profit and just eliminate the remainder of the profit this linear increase you want to eliminate so the way one way you can do that is by selling a call if you sell a call at the same strike at which you are long essentially what will happen is as your long stock position will make money as the market rises above the strike but all the money you are making on the long stock position is all being eaten up by the short call because the short call means when the market goes to say 140 hmm? uh, sir if we will be buying the uh, short call sir we will not be using any uh, time how can you buy the short call so sir if we will be going if we uh, if we will be buying the option that you said sir no 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 one minute i said short call yes. bulkit said short call yes sir so so sir we can we, you can't buy a short call Yes, sir. <laughs> you can't buy a short call. Either you go short the call or you go long the call. You can't buy a short call. Uh, you can say execute a short call. Short call. So then we will not be losing any sir. As you know that we will not be losing time and value. So you are yes, sir. You are saying the graph should go like. No, no. This is now we are not talking about time value. These are expiration diagrams. these are expiration diagrams so there is no time value left okay we are talking about expiration diagrams this is a scenario analysis at expiration where k is the strike price let me do the plotting for let me draw uh, plot the chart for okay what if the market price is here what if the market price is here what if it is here what if it is here what if it is here we are doing a scenario analysis at expiration so there is no time value left here this is clear to everyone these are expiration diagrams no time value left okay these are scenario analysis at expiration we are just considering so if you sell a call at the same price at which you are long what will happen let's say you are long at you are long stock at 100 and the expiration one scenario is the market price is 150 so on the long stock you have made 50 dollars yeah on the long stock you have made 50 dollars and but 
on the short call you have lost fifty dollars in terms of payoff not in terms of profit but in terms of payoff because you have made some money by selling the short uh, you're going short the call you made so you've collected some premium so we're not talking about profit we're talking about payoff but in terms of payoff of the short call the short call payoff will be minus 50 because you have sold a call at 100 and the market price is 50 150 so the owner's profit is uh, owner's payoff is plus 50 so your seller's payoff is is minus 50 are you following is everyone following yes, yes. Gulati what happened you're not feeling well not feeling then you go why don't why are you staying here I'm not forcing you to stay here you're not looking well also why don't you have any other class after this then go home you're not looking well I didn't even see I thought you were just uh, you're not looking well so I think you should go home <laughs> What happened? Go, go, you are not looking well also, so I think you should go. You, you can go, I'm saying you can go now. If you're not feeling, you're not looking well also. Why don't you go now? What is the point of waiting for 15 minutes? It's not going to make your, uh, I'm not going to cut your attendance. You can go now. If you're not feeling, since you're not feeling well, you should leave now. Okay. Are you guys following? one minute it's we are going through this uh, same uh, we are going through this all uh, uh, step by step each of these but I want to make sure that you understand because this if you understand all the uh, the stepwise logic it will uh, it will strengthen your understanding of options okay so <clears throat> is this clear okay one minute one second she is going now okay there's a constant parade of people yeah because nowadays in the cat you know that in the cat how long is the cat now three hours you are not allowed to take any toilet breaks during the cat you know that so so but i noticed that in the class you are always going out and one person comes out another person goes out okay so um, all right so is this clear now the first one we are dissecting the first one we want to make sure that everybody understands everybody has to understand if you don't follow at any step but Aroda, what is happening you're looking down are you following what is being discussed yeah you're trying to but if you don't follow then you have to interrupt me at any point of time okay i've told you the questioning aspect does not change you're still required to ask questions what assumption one minute which one. line this one yes sir yes sir okay why is this go straight okay now this line here why does it go straight because this is the remember this line is the result uh, this is the consequence so one minute uh, this means that uh, the price of uh, the uh, which we got uh, long on and short on will change uh, in the same position no, no, one minute. Let me explain it once again, then you try to understand. Okay. Don't worry about the magnitudes of the lines because we are talking about an example where to make it simple, we are talking about going long and short. Okay. Here they have gone long and short, the underlying at a different strike. Okay. Okay. So here we are assuming that we are going long and short at the same uh, strike as the option strikes. Okay. So don't worry about the magnitude of the, uh, of the positive amount, but look at just the positive. Okay. So first try to understand this. Uh, yeah. Sorry. What you had a question. Somebody and Tanya had a question. Yeah. Uh, which position for which use the mic use the mic if you can yeah so for which position are we making a specific position we are saying that we need to create a short put profile uh, synthetic profile for short put yeah we want to synthetically create a, on the one hand we have the short put, short put. Now we are trying to synthetically create a short put payoff profile by using combinations of other options and underlying. Okay, is this clear? That's the goal. Yes. So the way we do it is always disaggregated into two parts, left side and left right, left and right side of the strike. Okay, disaggregate into two parts. The left side, we said what we want. We want a profile where the line is going as soon as uh, when the market stops. So what is the profile of a short put? When the market drops below the strike, you start losing money in a linear fashion. Yes, okay so we want to create that profile on the left hand side so we the way we do it on the left hand side is basically we go long the stock so that will ensure that as the market drops below the strike we keep on losing money in a linear fashion is this clear 
because if you have a long stock position as you can see here when you have a long stock position you see the independent long stock position when you have a long stock position as the market drops below the price at which you're long you're continuously losing money in a linear fashion okay you're long at 100 market drops to 40 you are losing minus 60 okay so on and so forth uh, you're losing 60 basically so this is clear okay so what we are doing is the first the left hand side of the situation we have created by taking a long stock position but now the problem of the law look at the other side of the story with the same position that you have taken the first part you have taken is a long stock the problem with the long stock position is that when the market rises above the strike when the market rises above the strike this long stock position is making money in a linear fashion and it's creating the basically long stock position at the moment you have only got a long stock you haven't taken the next part so you got this kind of profile this is not good enough for you because what you want is this kind of profile you want this dotted the solid line you want to create the solid line. left side is okay but the right side is not you need to uh, you know at some point you need to start eliminating the profit and this linear increase should not be there so the way you do that is by selling a call you have to think of what kind of what should I do to ensure that as the market rises above the strike I keep losing I keep losing money in a linear fashion because what are you trying to eliminate you are trying to eliminate this phenomenon where you're making money in a linear fashion you want to get rid of making money in a linear fashion the way you get rid of that is by you make sure you lose money in a linear fashion right if you want to get rid of the situation of making money in a linear fashion you do something to ensure that you lose money in a linear fashion that will eliminate that profit okay so therefore what you do and how do you lose money by using this time you think about options you go short a call if you go short a call you have this kind of situation what is this you see the short call as the market rises above the strike the call is continuously losing money and so this continuously making money on the long stock gets totally eliminated by continuously making money on the sorry this continuously making money continuously losing money so all the excess profit is wiped out above the strike is this clear and you're left with as i said don't worry about the magnitude because that is we have assumed different rates at which you are long the underlying just look at here also you have a long you look at it the fact that it's above the zero line so it's a profit okay so this profit basically this profit comes from the profit remember you're going short a call you're going short a call so while you lose money above the strike price you will be getting some upfront premium yes. that's your profit in a situation and that situation is basically where it's uh, when the market is below the strike the call is not exercised so it proportionately reduces the loss that you have on the uh, on the uh, on, on your long stock position okay so therefore you see the the situation here on this so you can see from the short short call which gives you a premium outlay just focus on the pack fact that it's above the strike so are you following the thinking that needs to go in yes, sir. that on the one hand we are, you have been told some position long underlying short call whatever some position is given to you now you have to create the 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 synthetic equivalent of that using some other combination of options and long uh, underlines long short whatever okay so first you should draw the uh, position that is that you're trying to recreate now let's do this what kind of position is this the black line what is the black line we'll do it one more time what is the black line yes I'm getting long yeah long put it's a long position straight away you can see it's a long position because the black line is below the zero line so there's a part where there's a constant loss so that must mean the loss from the premium payment okay and there's no exercise so it's obviously a long position now question is whether long call or long put okay so this must be a long put because it shows that you're making money in a linear fashion as the market drops below the strike as the market drops below the strike yes okay so therefore this must be a long put so now you know that on the one side you have the long put now you have to recreate the profile of a long put again go left side right side one by one left side how do you create a profile situation where you want you want to see a situation where above the strike you're making money in a linear fashion i'm oh, sorry not above this as the market drops below the strike as the market drops below the strike you should make money in a linear fashion okay how do you do that you go short stock okay if you go short stock you can see you have this kind of profile 
which you see here short stock this is short futures okay same thing short underlying linear instruments futures stock uh, spot instruments stock okay short stock will have this kind of profile so this takes care of the left side of what you're trying to generate as the market drops below the strike and you're making money in a linear fashion okay so this has taken care of the left side but now we have to take care of the right side what do we want on the right side we want to have a constant loss we're gonna have a constant loss now what is the short stock producing the short stock when the market goes above the strike let's just stick with the first position that we took okay the first component of the synthetic the short stock is continuously losing money in a linear fashion okay losses proportionately increasing as the market goes above the strike we don't want that we want some loss but we want it to be capped at a certain level okay so what do we do okay so we go long the call okay the long the call means we will have some kind of loss okay because we will have to pay the premium okay so that will keep us below the zero line okay and what is the other benefit of the long call as the market drops below the strike as the market goes above the strike the call is continuously making money in a linear fashion and the long call position is basically offsetting the short stock position okay the linear loss of money on the short stock completely offset by the money on the long call position is this clear yes following are you following ritesh are you following okay okay so this is done now now you're getting this you must make sure that you go back and revise all this okay one by one step wise okay don't gloss over anything okay similar question to what parul was asking the other day why do we bother with this this you'll understand when you get to arbitrage that because because you can look at okay you can read the uh, book by Nattenberg the section that I've referred to you if you read that you'll get some better idea but the point is basically that in the market sometimes you'll see let's say this let's say you have this situation okay sometimes you may see that the cost of going uh, we have gone down actually so let's look at something we have already done we have done this long put situation now the long put has a certain cost associated with it in the sense you have to pay the premium and you have to also look at funding cost of the premium okay given the interest rate and all that so there is some cost okay of going long the put but since you can also create a long put profile by doing these other two transactions okay so on the one hand you have the explicit market cost of going long uh, long the put okay so you can look at a situation like this and you can see that buying the 58 and a half put okay is costing you 2.88 okay now but you may find that actually going long the call okay and going short the stock okay or short the underlying the combined cost of long the call and short the stock is less than 2.88 okay in this case what you will do is since the two positions are the same so the logic is basically that something cannot have the two as the cap can't have the same price okay so the same thing cannot have two different prices okay so therefore what you will do is you'll sell let's say it's less than 2.88 the long short the short stock and the long call together is less than 2.88 okay and here so there therefore what you'll do you'll sell this is of course you can't sell at this price you have to buy if you want to sell it's 280 but let's assume that it's the same price okay this by the way is called a choice price that also you should learn that there is something in market making we have bids and offers okay sometimes the market maker will quote you a price which is just basically one price and he will say ch after that choice okay ch is for choice yes. so that means that that's just one price that's considered a very good price i'm giving you one price at this price you can buy or you can sell whatever so if it gives you one price with a ch after that that means it's a choice price which means it's your choice you can either buy or sell okay and so the market ethics is that if somebody shows you a choice price this is when you're dealing in otc markets which we'll come to the convention in the market is when somebody is quoting you a choice price you should never decline that price because you have asked somebody for a price okay you should not just ask frivolously if you are asking for a dealing price you should be serious ready to deal and somebody quotes you a choice price you should not decline that price you should deal on that price otherwise it's considered unethical okay i mean basically unprofessional to not deal on a choice price okay so is this clear so uh, good question again same question that parul was asking what is the point the point is basically because sometimes you may see situations in efficient markets 
it's difficult to see them but it is possible this is what arbitrages do remember we had a third category of market participant okay which you will find in your textbook also there's some discussion of that so arbitrages this is what they do they look for situations where the same thing essentially okay the synthetic equivalent of something and that something itself they are trading at two different prices so there is an opportunity to to earn an arbitrage profit here what they'll do is they'll sell that 288 put okay and they will buy the, they will go short the stock and buy a call and the total cost of the short stock and long call will be less than 288 so that balance they will pocket and they'll have no risk because remember the profile is the same okay the profile is the same so if you're just looking at one side if i have short something and i have a long call basically i have no net exposure because the long call is going to cover for my losses on the short stock okay so therefore you have no net risk and so that's why we worry about these things that's why we worry about these synthetic equivalent relationships because in the markets you may find those situations prevailing and so you should know what is the synthetic equivalent of what Isn't you could say it's hedging in the sense that once you sell the uh, you could say this is once you sell this uh, once you sell the 285 call which uh, the put which is too expensive compared to the synthetic equivalent price okay and then you uh, buy this it's you could say it's hedging but it's not a very uh, good term because hedging we have a we different category of people who who's a, uh, who are hedgers okay so hedging has this is really more uh, arbitrage okay this is called because it's simultaneous okay so, so hedging problem with hedging using a term like hedging is hedging can sometimes happen uh, where you're in hedging you have to look at the concept of underlying position okay underlying position and the hedge position now the hedge the underlying position can remain in place the underlying position can remain in place for quite some time without any hedge so the hedge position need not always come into place at the same time that the underlying position comes into play that's why we don't want to use the word hedging here because here this is a case of arbitrage so uh ritesh just shut the door even the whatever time we have just shut the door we don't want even two minutes okay is this clear to everyone yes. i'll just quickly wrap up okay i'll just quickly wrap up here so that we can go on to the next topic in the next class okay which is what are we trying to create any question any other? yeah how frequently, how frequently do the prices go out of line yeah that's what i was saying that how frequently is the price of the synthetic equivalent different from the price of the uh the the other thing which for which we are looking at the synthetic equivalent so this i can't give you a clear-cut answer to this because we don't know it may happen that's why arbitrages exist okay they are always looking at synthetic equivalents versus the actual thing okay so therefore uh, but it's impossible to answer your question that how frequently it happens in the sense that how frequently does the sun rise every 24 hours i can give you a clear answer here i can't give you a clear because it depends on the market okay but sometimes it happens and that's when arbitrages come in okay all right so we have one minute we'll try to finish something here at least quickly i'll just wrap it up quickly you can understand it later on on your own okay we are trying to create what is this position here black line long call the black line is a long call below this rising above profit rising above the strike long call the black line this is your pro profile figure number 2.1 figure 12.1 in your textbook okay you can read this again and follow it up okay long call and then uh, you can see i'll just take two minutes extra garvit okay with your permission long call we want to create a long call left side we want to have a situation where everything cancels out there's only a small loss okay so we can buy we can buy a put which will make money above the above uh, as the, as the market falls below the strike and we can offset that with a long stock position so below the strike we'll have a constant loss small loss because on the long stock position we'll lose money as the market drops below the strike okay and on the long put we will make a corresponding amount of proportional profit so the losses on the long stock position below the strike will be made up by the gains on the long put position is clear okay so is this are you following we have to figure it out this way okay now on the other side we want to have a constant profit uh, we want to have a pr proportionately increasing profit linear profit profile above the strike for that we have the long stock 
because the long put will just have a constant loss <coughs> and the long stock will continuously make money as the market goes up are you following yes. and the last one you can uh, manage it on yourself on your own i think you can manage yes. the last one is what is this profile the black line yes short call okay short call first ask yourself what can i do to create this constant loss uh, to linear loss profile above the strike i go short the stock okay and then but on the other side the short stock will continuously lose money uh, will make money that i don't want i want to cut it off okay so then i go short the put the put will offset this is this clear so this topic is over next class we'll go on to historic volat historical volatility not historic we are doing the same thing for the other two sectors they were either don't say longing it we are going short or going long don't say longing it no we are not doing the same thing we are not doing the same thing we are asking the same kind of question don't say we are doing the same thing because you are not actually doing the same thing all the time you are asking the same kind of question that is what do i need to eliminate this profile and get what kind of profile get the profile that i want are you following yeah Thank <laughs> you.